There's no losing, only learning. I have the responsibility to make sure that you guys are well represented. There's no failure, only opportunities. Anytime you see me, you can say, oye, ese tipo tiene su pasado. And there's no problems, only solutions. Pero mira lo que está haciendo con su vida. He took it from a negative to a positive, and that's what's representing us now. This is from negative to positive. Yeah, to be here, being able to talk to Luther Campbell, having people in, in I would say at the table that we're all making history together, one way or another, right? Show. Sure. And the reason that we named this podcast from negative to positive, because I feel that's all what we've all done with our life. When we really look at it and look at the history of what we come from, where we come from, meaning our folks, our culture, and you see that everything that they've went through in order for us to move forward. You know, like we always say, adelantando la <laughs> adelantando la raza de una manera u otra, adelantando la cultura, adelantando tu comunidad, adelantando tu gente, you know, which is moving everybody forward one way or another, right? So for me, growing up in Miami in the 80s, which I've told the story to everybody plenty of times, but Miami, the entrepreneurs in Miami in the 80s, uh, their startups was called cocaine. You know, cocaine is basically what built this city, and cocaine is what created the economy down here, and a lot of folks took their life from a negative to positive. Some of them, they're not here with us no more. Some of them are riding out their whole life in prison, and some of them are still on the f***ing run. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for that kind of hustle and me growing up around that this whole time, then I don't think I would have had the drive and the hunger and the same way to thrive in the music business. Because to me, it's the same hustle, different product. Yep. So to be able to be here at the podcast speaking, you know, taking everybody from a negative to positive, when they hear me say that, they, that's, what, that's what I mean by that. Because growing up, I thought that a lot of things that I was looking at I, in the different neighborhoods that I grew up in, I try to tell people all the time I grew up in good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods, worse neighborhoods. So I got a chance to have a full scope. Yep. And the funny thing is, is the worst things I've seen in the good neighborhoods. Right. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. Like when I seen the feds hit, good neighborhood. DEA hit, good neighborhood. ATF hit, good neighborhood. In the bad neighborhoods, it was jump outs every Tuesday, Thursdays. They're just, you know, little undercover cops or whatever or not. But the real shit was going on in the good neighborhoods. Those, those are people that were coming up. Like in Miami, we say if you move from the northwest to the southwest, you're coming up. <laughs> if you're moving from 8th Street, you know, Calle Ocho and Little Havana to La Sauesera or Westchester, you're coming up. Right. And, and it's the same way, same mentality, same hustle, same grind that we've taken and applied it to the music business. Okay? And that's why I feel, especially in today's day and age, we run circles around what's going on in the music business. And a lot of these folks don't have that same hustle, don't have that same grind. they rather fall for vanity. they rather fall for followers and likes. they rather fall for... Um, pictures that don't even f***ing exist because they Photoshop them so much you don't know who you're looking at or what you're looking at. <laughs> so like reality or real is no longer a part of society, I feel. So it was a blessing to come up in these times and be able to do this and have a conversation with folks that have come up in the game such as yourself, White Shadow, and, and Jenny to watch you grow and clearly last everything that you've done for, for me and for us and for the city. Thank you. Is my pleasure, man. It's a true pleasure. Right. You know, and I can't wait to be honest with you. I mean, I'd love to hear more about how everybody here has taken their life from a negative to positive, but also look forward to having Luke come on and yeah, yeah. that's, a, that's I, a lot of negative to positive. And, and it's crazy because I was watching an interview on him and he was saying how he took you from the streets mm -hmm. and showed and was like, this is your gift. Yes. One of so, the people, yes. Right, and to be to be on the road with you, hearing your story of him, I'm very interested to see the dynamic of both of you be able to share your. Oh, stories. he's gonna be clowning me the whole the whole show. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> I, I think also uh, some of the most positive people I've met in this business have had the most negative things happen to them. You yes. know what I'm saying? So I think it's interesting to examine because people look at it from the outside in right and it's like oh man that's awesome that jet looks great or that car looks great or those you know whatever looks great but like in order to do that you have to go through some shit, right yeah, they, like, they don't know what the, it took to get there yeah that's the exciting yeah. part how do you turn that negative that you experience into something it's into something great and especially in the society now it's all about instant gratification right it's not about now it's about right now right and they don't have add they have add -D 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 -D. <laughs> so yeah 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 <laughs> so therefore you know, <laughs> I did, 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 did. It, it's the truth, man. It really is. It's, it's the truth. And it, for us to be able to have this and explain to them what hard work is, what it is to pay dues, earn stripes, go through what you go through, I wouldn't have it any other fucking way because there's no money in the world that can buy that journey. Right. That's what makes it priceless. Right. And if you ain't got a story, you ain't got a journey. And I say it every night when I hit the stage, I tell people, if you don't know where you're from, you don't know where you're going. Right. And if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. Right. And that's what's happening right now. Everybody's falling for anything. So at, with this podcast from negative to positive to bring on real people, been through real shit, and have also 
created real history for us to be able to be here to even say what we want to say. Right. I mean, you got Luke who fought for the First Amendment. Shit, man, it means a whole lot. So I go back to it being an honor yeah. and a blessing to show you mother. Cause how to take it from negative to positive. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, and think about this. Dan, look, look at the Pokemon Bean Project right behind me. Tell your Chico Pit Boom, Mr. 305, but it said Mr. Worldwide, and you already know what it is. Now, you want to feed your whole crew with KFC? Let's go. I can get that KFC bucket of chicken, and you know that's fire. It's a home-cooked meal. You don't even have to cook. <laughs> now, Babu, you know that you could get that mac and cheese, that mashed potato, gravy, those biscuits. Now, that's, that's trouble right there. That is fire right there. Pero mi madre, que rico. You know, on negative to positive, we always talk about striving and achievement. And Colonel Sanders was what some people would just dismiss as, as just a cook. But don't ever dismiss anyone because you don't know what's inside of them. He, he believed in himself. He, he created a great product. He created a great brand. He never forgot where he came from. Man, this, this guy sounds like somebody I know. Oh, and by the way, he was a great philanthropist as well. Man, we got more in common than what I thought. <laughs> now, let me take a bite of this Kentucky Fried Chicken right here. Mm. Hey, yo, Chico, so you were talking about what a pleasure it is to be with everybody here. At the yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now it's time to introduce the man of the hour, the one and only Mr. Luther Campbell. Hey, no, for one, man, it's an honor to have you on. I'm in this... I'm in this uh, this hotel in Atlanta, so when the air condition cut on, it really got uh, low. Uh, you were saying something about the uh, Power 96 days? Yeah, remember the day you introduced me to, to Laz? When you took me up to the yeah, station yeah, and you man, told him. That was, I, I mean, that was the first thing. I mean, you know, um, you know, when, when, you know, when we went on this, uh, when we went on this quest to go find this uh, Cuban rapper, I, it, was, <laughs> it was, you know, I, I said out, as a record company, because we had everything, we had you know JT Money, we had Trick Daddy, we had put all these different things. And I was like, look, man, we got to we got get, we can't be a complete record company if we don't go find a Cuban rapper. You know, uh, the boys had Big Pun and and uh, Fat Joe, the Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. in uh, New York. So you know, I, the first thing I did, you know, knowing that you know Laz was over at uh, at, at Power Nine Six. I was like, okay, we got this rapper. Now we got to take it over there to Les, the Power 96, and everybody over there. So that was the first stop because you know Power 96 automatically uh, served the Hispanic community as well as all communities. But, you know, that's 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 uh, the Hispanic uh, station. So I said, look, we got to go over there and meet meet the Don, Les. God damn <laughs> Les, my guy. Uh, well, let me tell you, man, since that introduction, me and Laz, we've been uh, joint at the hip. I mean, I, I, I've been walking a little better than him, but. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I got a hip replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you. Now, now we're lifelong friends, man, thanks to you. Yes, so sir. we appreciate that. But another thing I wanted to get into with you, you know, was basically letting everybody know how important you are to the music game and, and to, I mean, Miami as a whole, you being the king of Miami and what you've done for Miami from whether it's sports, whether it's music, whether it's entertainment, and whether it's even fighting for the First Amendment for us to be able to say whatever we want to say and the way we want to, how can I say, creatively express ourselves. And I don't think a lot of people understand how important you are to to all of us and all the doors that you've opened. So I wanted you, wanted you to explain a little bit of everything that you went through back in the day and all the roadblocks that you had, because obviously me growing up in the crib, 305 day, kind of born and raised, I got a chance to see it firsthand. And also, you know, being a, a, a third grader listening to Two Live Crew, I, I, don't, I don't know how normal that was, but it, it definitely shaped me to be an, an amazing adult. <laughs> And a, and a civilized citizen, right? <laughs> but yeah, Luke, and then the other thing I'd love to get into, man, when, when the time, when, once you speak about that, is how Miami is so influential, not only to the music business, but to the world, and how everybody comes down here, picks up our style, and doesn't necessarily respect the way that they should, and how the future's looking. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the thing is, just like you say, you know, uh, you know starting off, you know, when you, when you, you know, when you start, when, you know, when we started Southern Hip Hop, you know, yep. we take the claim for that because ain't nobody else was really doing it, you know, uh, at the time, you know, uh, on a national level. I mean, you, you're you going to get backlash. You know, we we were pretty much outcast wherever we went and did concerts. You know, we did a concert with Eric B. Rakim. You know, uh, we were given three minutes on stage. 
you know, we would go to the new music seminar. DJ Laz is pretty familiar with that. Yes, sir. You know, they would have hip hop panels and they would be saying that, you know, what we're doing in the South would never uh, manifest to anything. You know, it won't be no such thing as Southern hip hop. So we were kind of outcasts, you know, coming up in the game. So you had a combination of, you know, the industry and the, and the heads in the industry not respecting what we was doing because we were from Miami. And so, you know, you had to fight every day. I remember myself getting in big brawls with different managers and fighting Run DMC on stage in Biloxi, Mississippi, <laughs> you know, for, for this. And, uh, you know, and so at the same time, you know, it was a fight and then, you know, going through that whole struggle of now not being affiliated with a major record label, you know, and, and taking all these sales from the South, you know, those boys kind of put the uh, government on us and, you know, yep. now it became a fight against for free speech and, 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 and for hip hop and for guys to be able to say what they want to say on the record, you know, so you had all that going on and still trying to keep your money and not get robbed by the accountants that you had sitting in, in your, in your, in the room. And at the same time, you're still trying to get records played on the radio around the country. So, you know, it was a difficult uh, fight, but, but I'm just happy that we were able to, fight the fight to see guys like yourself, you know, uh, Thank you. see all these other artists, Ross, uh, uh, Trick still doing his thing, Trina them doing their thing, and all these other- Flowing uh, them, yeah. Uh, artists from around here, as well as Atlanta, doing their thing. Now, and, and you know, I remember one time when you was on, <laughs> when you were on Donahue. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so Donahue was bigger than Oprah back then. And for those that don't know, you know, and he was the biggest talk show in America. And Luke went on there and he performs this record called The Funk Shop. But in the streets, you already know what it really is, no? Uh, yeah. So he went up there and he brought out the Miami girls in spandex with holes and, you know, all over the legs and everything. And they started booty shaking in the whole, <laughs> the whole crowd. But the best part is just to see America's face looking at our city going, what? Whoa. What the <laughs> f is this? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, that's what the cafeteria looked like right there. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> Every day. Yeah, hey, listen, man. And that's that's another thing, uh, Pitt, we don't get no credit for, which I love when I look at all your shows or any videos. Of, we don't get credit for bringing the dancing like how we do it in Miami, you know, onto the stage. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to think about it. When hip hop started early on, it was just straight break dancing. It yep. wasn't necessarily, you know, the type of dancing that we do. So when I look at your shows and the shows that we did, yeah, you know, we had the booty shaking girls, but we always incorporated the dancing girls within the scene. So they played a major role in that. And, and when we did that show, man, you know, I, I said, we actually did Donahue about five times and everyone, I was like, y'all, we're going to get them more. It was just, it was just a matter. I, I know it's going to be an audience full of uh, green, white people that don't have any idea of what we're doing. And I just we didn't get the worst record. You know, I think we did, we won some P one day and we did, you know, we did all the nasty records that we could possibly do to just, just, just shock it in their face. Yeah, 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 shock Yo, can I, can I say that like, people don't give that the respect that it gets all the time now because they're used to seeing that kind of thing now. But back then, yeah. like you got clowned for bringing dancers up on stage a lot of times. So it was like, that's oh, what it was like yeah, that's what I mean. Like, like there were raps about like, you got 30 million dancers in a big band. I'm, I'm, I'm real hip hop. And like, mm -hmm. so to be able to do that with the confidence and the drive and like the swag that Luke did it with literally changed the entire scope of how people perform. Well, let me tell you, I, and me, that I went on the first tour I went on was with with Luke, and we, we you know, we toured everything below the Mason Dixon line, basically. And he had me in all the. <laughs> it was a, it was all a, the holes. Yeah, yeah, it was a great ride. I learned a whole lot, and but one thing about Luke is once he hits the stage, he's one of those <laughs> artists that once he's up there, the other artist is looking. It's like, damn, I gotta go after that. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned a lot from that. When I hit the stage, I'm giving you everything I got. And then on top of that, when you bring beautiful, sophisticated, because yeah, as much as the girls get on stage or got on stage, it's a different show right now. But either or when they got on stage, yeah, they get loose. They did what they did. That was their job. But after that, you could have a full conversation with them. You know, some of them were opening businesses. Other ones were opening stores. Everybody was on their hustle and their grind. Nobody was just out there for that. That was just um, 
how, how can I say, a platform for them to go to the next level on what they had going on and, and applying the hustle that they learned on the, on the road with Luke. So it was, all, it was empowering. And it's funny because one time, Luke, I, I had the girls with me and we went to go perform for Microsoft. You remember when yes. we, we were in San Francisco? Yes. And Buddy and them at Microsoft said, oh, no, you can't bring the girls on stage because the, the kids that are coming up in the Microsoft system right now, they're a part of the Me Too movement. That's, that's funny, because I'm a part of the Me Too movement too. And it makes no sense, <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense if I take the girls off stage, that's, that's depowering them. Right. We need to empower mm -hmm. them. So them being on stage with us, performing hit records that have touched the world, that, you know, like I always say, music unites everybody. Man, that's, that's empowerment. So when I flipped it on him like that, he said, man, I didn't even look at it like that. I said, yeah, sometimes you, you, you need to understand that I, I'm all about taking a stance, but you got to be careful on how you may take an opportunity away instead of be given an opportunity. And sure enough, we performed, knocked it out the park. Now every time Microsoft calls us, the <laughs> first thing they're asking for, hey, are the most bad ones coming with you? <laughs> can, the, can the girls come and you just, you just chill? Like the right. <laughs> I would love to just send the girls, to be honest with you. <laughs> Jenny, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the girls, go ahead and handle that. <laughs> Now, Luke, as far as that, coming up in the game, I know you had also, how can I say, uh, interesting relationships with different artists. And a lot of them, like even like what happened in Atlanta back in the day at, at Jack the Rapper, if I'm not mistaken, and things that happened with uh, Dr. Dre, with Snoop, and all these things that have happened in the game that people don't know about and the way that you've always made people respect Miami and respect the crib and respect 305 the way that you did, which obviously instilled a lot of pride in someone such as myself, also Laz and everybody at this table. You know, we're making, Paul from Detroit, he's from the D, and I know you always told me the, the, the realest women are in the D. So I told him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah. yeah. We changed the name to Freak Troy. Yeah. Oh, well, I like that. Freak Troy. Yes, sir. Well, one time for Freak Troy. And, and, and now he's an honorary uh, 305 Day County representative. I'm down here learning this. Hey, <laughs> oh, wait, wait. We even taught him some Spanish. I, I, I got the bingo right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so yeah Luke all your trials and tribulations that you went through coming up in the game that not necessarily everybody uh, speaks about and knows about man in order for you to hold it down yeah I mean you know the, the thing is you know I, we, we have a lot of stories and unfortunately when you're considered an outcast like myself I'm not you know, I'm not in the in crowd. I'm not with the Russell Simmons, uh, the God Bless Dead, the Andrea Rails and Puff Daddies. You know, our stories from the Miami perspective kind of get buried. You know, uh, uh, just, the other, just the other day they gave me a first lifetime achievement award or whatever it was from uh, BT uh, <laughs> oh, two nice. years ago. So, I mean, yeah, congrats on that. They don't, to this day, they still don't respect uh they don't want to. They don't want to acknowledge uh, what we did and the precedent that we set. So, you know, I, I look at it from that standpoint. That you know, hey, look, you know, that's that's more that's more content that people don't know about when they get when they do know about it. You know, when we start doing these uh, these docu series and these strip shows about you know the the uh, the struggle and the coming up of, of Luke Records and all the artists that was involved and how we did it. It just makes it much more. Uh, valuable that people will then automatically, you know, get to start seeing this stuff. Uh, just no different than what Master P is doing on Chronicles. I mean, he, same situation. You know, they don't, you know, for, you know, because we're in the South, they don't necessarily understand the South and they don't think that we have an audience. Uh, and so at the end of the day, this guy's, um, you know, his show is number one on BET right now and everybody loving it and all that. So these are stories that they just don't know. And they'll, they'll get to, they'll get to see the stories because so, we are, we are, we are, we are actually the, the saviors of hip hop. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that we've done in the South and everything we fought for. Yeah. And, that, and that's another thing. So you got a series that you're working on shows, movies, books, things of that nature that's going to be coming out to be able to Educate. Let it, yeah, educate people. There you go. I was looking for the word. I appreciate that. Because gotcha, <laughs> they know one thing I always say about Miami boys, you know, you, you, you do what you say, but you don't say what you do. You know, so we handle our business, but we don't like everybody knowing our business. So therefore, correct, correct. when it comes to us always not necessarily always getting those articles out there or having a PR team that, hey, we need to hype this up in order to get record sales up or nothing like that. We just like to grind, handle our business, and stick to ourselves. And that's one thing that I've learned from you, obviously from growing up in Miami also too, but it's, 
it's funny that my history, one way or another, has ran parallel to yours, where a lot of people don't understand a lot of the history that we've been through or the work that we've put in and the dues that we've paid. Just because we're not always out there like we need to be on the headlines or we need to be on social media or we need to be on this. But when they check in, cross-reference the facts, it all checks the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. You know, when people yeah, come to the yeah, city, yeah, yeah. when they come to the city yeah, and they I mean, say, hey, people, go ahead. No, my bad. I was just going to say that when, when they come to the city and they say, oh, Luke is the king. He run it. When, if you need something done, it's going to get done. He's not necessarily going to be out there bragging about it and, and letting everybody know about it. You know, and same thing on, on, on our end. So... I think that that mentality has allowed us to navigate through the game, create our own lane, and more than anything, survive. Because then you get a chance to see, like I say in the music business, they're here today, gone today. And mm -hmm. especially in today's society, Luke, I, I tell this all the time to the team, the fake gets celebrated and the real get hated. I don't know what it is, but it's just cool as to be fake now. I don't, <laughs> no, thanks. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I want to talk about what we, the conversation that we had as far as Miami being such a mecca now for the whole world when it comes to entertainment, sports, and music, and how you basically built it from the ground up to take it to the next level. Like, a lot of people don't know what you mean to UM, what you mean to the Dolphins, what you mean to the Heat, what you mean to, you know, I don't know about the Marlins. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, hey, if you were connected to the Marlins like everybody else, they probably have a winning team every year. <laughs> they, would, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be at, at the old Orange Bowl, I can tell you that. That's for sure. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but I think that Miami being such a young city in the world's eyes, we have so much history and we've done so much. Whether it be from, I go back to street game, entertainment, music game, sports, you know, and you're a major part yeah. of that. Hey man, I appreciate it. I mean, the thing what the people don't realize about Miami, you don't even, people don't realize that you know Miami is a just like you say Miami is a straight hustle. Everybody in Miami is, is on a hustle. You know, a lot of people the conception of Miami being the South is a totally misconception. It's a melting pot of of Caribbean people. You know, people from Latin countries, people from the Caribbeans, and 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 everybody. If you know anything about all of us that comes from all of these different islands. We, you know, my parents, you know, Jamaican and Bahamian and, and great, great, great grandmama uh, Cuban and daddy meet mama in Cuba and that's how they linked up and uh, obviously that's how I ended up here. And <laughs> people, everybody, everybody here is on the straight hustle yep. and, uh, and they get down here and they think, oh, we're going to the South and these dudes is Bama down there and they don't know no better. We can kind of come down there and take advantage of the situation. And then they get hit with they get hit with with too much game because the girls take them for a ride. That's, the, that's the first one. Uh -huh. and, be, and before you know it, <laughs> hey, before you know it, they dust them off and they send them back either on crack <laughs> and they had to go back to where they came from and they broke. And then they'd be like, oh, man, what really happened down here? You know, it was real fast when we, we thought it was really slow. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we are a we are. You know, we always talk about in the music business breakout markets. We are a breakout market. And so whatever can can happen here can happen anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's sir. a pit bull that breaks out in Miami. He basically can break out anywhere around the world. If there's a DJ Laz, I remember Laz, you know, Laz hot and Laz was more hotter than in Texas and California because he was from Miami yeah. back in the days. Like, where you at, Laz? Oh man, I'm in Texas. Oh, I'm in El Paso. Oh, I'm all over the place. <laughs> so it was like, Shit. you know, uh, it's a breakout market, whether it's Latin or black or whatever it may be. And, and we are well respected around the world. Uh, and people people just love it. So I, and that, You I said it best. Hey, Luke, you said it best when it comes to the women. Because I, I try to tell, talk to the team about a lot of things when we're out and about. And I tell them, you know, clearly, me growing up around you, I seen a, seen a whole lot, learned a whole lot. <laughs> but yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> and Mr. Red taught him everything he knows about women. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, and that's the <laughs> thing. And those are headlines that don't get hit up when these women hit these. You know, they hit them for their change. They hit them for their money. They hit them for whatever they hit them. These celebrities, athletes, slash 
artists don't want to talk about that because they don't want to talk about how they got robbed by a woman. <laughs> how they, <laughs> how they, <laughs> everybody down here in Miami is the truth, man. And hey, I, I had a chain every time on when Super I came Bowl down. comes down here, well, you got so robbed I, in Miami. I had a chain on when I came down. No, oh, did you? I, I, took, I, took, I, I, I took believe it. it. No, Jenny, you got the first chain. <laughs> Uh, but every time, remember when the Super Bowl would come down here, it would be one of the football players that were the best, you know, we would go to church, good guy, married, had everything going for himself. Came to Miami, hit 79th Street, and it was over with. Done. One night. Done. Done. That's just one story. But, but, all right, but think about it. How many people come to Miami and get turned the hell out? Because this is, we, you've been all over the world. Yeah, I've been turned out my whole life. No, no, no. But <laughs> you've been all over the world, but there's nothing like Miami women. Oh, no. Nah. Nothing. Now, you got to have definitely your A game. You gotta get yeah, ready. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of guys. It's a lot of guys ended up, a lot of basketball players and football players ended up uh, with babies from girls out of the strip club and they didn't even know that they were strippers. All day. I used to watch them in the club, huddle up, and they already knew who got picked first, what check they got, how many years they've been in the league, and they'd be like, all right, hut, boom, and they just hit the club, and next thing you know, two over here, three over there, one over there, getting at everybody. And I, I've, and I know folks that have fallen for the okie doke also. Mm, not myself. That's why when I go to the clubs, I don't pop no bottles. I don't do none of that. I got my records played. I sit in the cut <laughs> <laughs> with about two or three women that I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only time that we would bring sand to the beach. Now we bring beach to the sand. True. That's a little different. <laughs> It's a little different now. But that's all. Thank you to, to you, Luke. I appreciate you. And I can't wait to get you to the school, man. I know you're up in Atlanta doing your thing. But more than anything, I hope to do many more of these. And more. And whenever you want to come on, you know that you're welcome to. And any way that we can help, you know that we're here, man. I appreciate you more than you know. I love you. I love everything that you've done for, for me, for the city, and for us. And it's always an honor to be able to speak your name and our kind of connection out here and let them know that you're one of the people that have taught me how to Take it to the next level. So thank you for that. I appreciate you, Luke. Hey man, I, I appreciate coming on. And just like you say, I mean, anytime you, anytime you do, I got to get by the school. I know I was gonna get over there before the COVID hit uh, to see the kids and everything. But uh, again, I always, like I always say, man, I'm proud of everything that you do and everything that you represent. And, uh, and, and, and just like you said early on, to be able to have longevity in this business, you know, it's a here today and going tomorrow and a fickle type business and for you to build your fan base around the world go globally and for people to be loyal to what you do. I mean, that's what it's all about. And that's, and, uh, and I'm just so happy uh, for you and everything that you're doing. And uh, you got your right hand, right hand man over there last. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. love yeah. it. I just love it. I mean, love it, you, Luke. It, yeah. it started from one place and you guys still linked up together like this. It's a beautiful thing, man. No, I, I appreciate you. Love you too, my brother. Everyone needs somebody to talk to sometimes when things are getting a little hard to handle. And with Talkspace, you're able to find that support. With Talkspace, you can match up with your perfect therapist that can advise you with what's going on in your life. Communication is key. If you ask me, I tell people all the time, the more you talk about it, the more you let it out, the more you get it off your chest, the more you either say, I'm sorry, and move forward, or say, hey, man, I appreciate you teaching me that, and move forward. So that's why I love what Talkspace is doing. Part of what I'm doing with Negative to Positive is encouraging people to change their lives to try to be the best that you could possibly be. What they're doing at Talkspace is providing a solution for treating anxiety, for treating depression, for treating substance abuse. With Talkspace, if you want to reach out and get a response from someone, you don't have to wait a week. Message your therapist, get responses fast and efficient, take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. Everyone needs somebody to talk to sometimes. When things are getting a little hard to handle, and with Talkspace, you're able to find that support. And you do that by downloading the app. For everybody listening to Negative to Positive, there's a special offer right now on Talkspace. Just use promo code PITBULL and you will get $100 off your first month, which is important in helping make the changes that you want to make. Just use promo code PITBULL and you will get $100 off your first month. Remember, self first, not selfish. Self first. I appreciate y'all. Go ahead, go ahead, my bad. Yeah, no, no, no worries. But before we go, can I may I ask a question real quick? Oh, I, not every day I get to talk to Uncle Luke. Oh man, so go ahead. One quick question. Talk to the uncle. Um, yeah, please, jeez. Uh, you were talking earlier about some of the stuff that you said that you had to hustle different than everybody, and you were working super hard, and everybody had you like kind of pinned down by their thumb and not, nowhere to fit, like you were an outlier. How how does that how did that affect you 
in what you're doing today with the filming and being able to uh, tell your story now. Like and the what, kids too. Got to talk about yeah, that. My better cut you off. and like all. I feel like you've gone from a lot. Like the sh- name of the show is negative to positive, right? Like you, you just touched on some of those things in the early in your career that probably shaped a lot of the stuff that you're doing now. With, with that, in a completely different way, you didn't think was even going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's something that like you could, a, a jewel you can drop for us. Uh, and the people that are listening to kind of talk about what that means uh, for you going from a, a, a negative to a positive? I mean, I mean, you know, I always say negative and positive create energy. If you you, you got to have the two. You got to have a negative and you got to have a positive. You can't you, you to create energy to cut the lights on. Even you, you have to have the, the negative to add on to the positive. And so I always looked at it from that standpoint of. You know, I never, I never, you know, took anything for granted. But then at the same time, you know, what fused my fire and what fused all of our fires is the fact that they say what you can't do. You know, I know in my household, can't, couldn't be used, at, you know, within the household, you would get probably uh, knocked upside the head real hard. So <laughs> I, never, I never had can't in my vocabulary. Yes, and, the, and, and for the mere fact that we were here in Miami, and when people say you can't do this and you guys can't Underdog. Uh, achieve mm. things, you know, we always said, no, 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 that ain't, no, no, be, that we, we're not going to stand for that. And we always, you know, kept fighting and pushing the envelope on, on a major scale. I mean, even with the record company, you know, it's just, you know, it's being versatile. Oh, y'all can only do bass. Oh, y'all can only do booty music. And then said, no, nah, okay, all right, I'm going to give you some R&B shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we'll give you H Town. Oh, y'all can only do uh, bass and now it's all sexual. Okay, well, we're going to give you some, we're going to give you some uh, hardcore uh, poison gland, you know? So it's it's like, you know, it, anytime they say it can't, you know, we always manifested it. We always made sure we did something different and showed them that we could do that. And that's why I'm so happy uh, that, you know, I'm, we're going to be able to put this stuff on screen and on TV right now because they're going to see they're going to see the stories. They're yeah. going to see where we came right. from and where we're at right now. And, and that's so, so important uh, to, be able to, to be able to do in these days. Do but, we, do we, I do mean, we... that's that's what I I guess the, the, the biggest jewel. And that's why I always, any of my artists, whether it was Pitt or anybody, I always tell them, look, man, you got to stay on your grind. Always. You got to automatically, you got to respect the little man. And that's what I love about this guy, because he would be the guy sitting there, you know, watching things, and he, you know, he was a real pit bull. He was a real pit bull. I remember when some rappers was talking about me, and he was like, "Let me get them. Let me get them." I was like, "No, no, 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 no. We'll be all right." He was like, "No, no. Let me get them. No, no. Sit on down. We're gonna take it. Uh, uh, we're gonna do it a certain kind of way." And, yeah. and so, you know, but always remember the little man because that's longevity. That is longevity where you could where you could bring people up like the young lady in the studio. You could bring people up and, and go to the you know uh, your fans and your fans love fans have a connection with people you know who are real. Just like people were saying earlier, and and when they see that you're real, genuine, and you really love them, they will always be there for the rest of their life. And I think that's why you know I can go do shows right now. I did a sh- show last night and. Florence, yeah. South Carolina, in the middle of a pandemic, it was twenty thousand people out there screaming. Uh-huh. The yeah, hey, I should have went to that uh-huh. show. Yeah. Right? What was the invite? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We got. Hey, no, we can't. We, we that show was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know that's got to yeah, be a good show. I had to take that. I got. I got thrown off of Instagram probably twice already. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. That I mean, that's that's what it is. We uh, just fight. We just fight in Miami. We underdogs, just, baby. Yeah. That's all we know how to do is fight. Yeah, and I mean honestly, like I don't think people comprehend like when 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 you talk about what you've done for the world, not just hip hop. Like a lot of people that are in hip hop, you know, you got cut out because you were rap. You know, you took this shit all the way to the highest court in the United States of America. Yeah, and, 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 and one, and one, and one. But, but like that aside, I know a lot of people that like. They get told no by the record label and they go home and sit on their ass for the next two months. You know what I mean? Complaining about how how, how the it's record labels no. are taking them. Oh, you shelved me over here, blah, blah. And they sit there and cry about it. You literally took it 
from the street all the way to the highest court in the land. And I feel like that kind of... And like, one. Yeah, and one. And that, <laughs> that kind of drive... That's the most important that, part. That kind of drive is, is just unexplainable a lot of times to younger kids today. And it's a, it's a blessing for me to sit here and talk to you just because it changed my life completely. And, you know, me too. And so many people's lives. Yeah, so I'm, Fighters, that, grinders, that move grind, shakers. Insane, insane to me. <laughs> I think that's the they Miami do. hustle right. that you don't get from a lot of different places. Nah, I, I when tell you come from Miami, you run circles around people in other places. Why'd so. you do it? Why, why did you why, why did you take that as far as you took it? What's your reasoning? What, what, you know, I looked at the big picture. You know, again, that whole can't thing, you know, and, and saying, okay, we're going to take your record off the shelf. So they took the record. It was two, it was two cases where people, people kind of um, probably – it, it was two different cases for two, two different things. One, there was a case uh, where they took the record off the shelf and the federal judge Gonzalez out of Broward County deemed the, the album obscene, nasty as they want to be. That was one case. I I eventually got, I had to get that that uh, that uh, case overturned because if I didn't get that overturned, then anybody saying any explicit lyrics on a record that would have been uh, precedent set that any other record after that would have been, you know, Megan Thee Stallion and uh, Lil' Kim or anybody cursing on the record. Those records, they could have took them off the shelf because there would have been case law on on the on the books that they could use against any artist coming behind us. So that was one major thing that kind of get overshadowed by the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court was a parody case where the parody was protected by the First Amendment and satire, which we was doing. So if we didn't win that case, then what you see on Saturday Night Live and all the comedians uh, making fun of people, you know, imitating people, you wouldn't have been able, to they wouldn't that. have been able to do that. So it was two things going on at the same time with it directly <laughs> affect the, uh, the industry. And then they use that case right now for for internet, uh, which is uh, intellectual property, that's the number one case being used for people to be able Google and everybody to be able to use uh, content from from the web right now. Uh, so wow. those are two. Those Historical. both of them yeah. major, mm -hmm. uh, but for the industry itself, you know, if, if I didn't get all those things overturned, then it would stay there. I mean, again, just. You know, why did I do it? I lost, I actually spent millions and millions of dollars fighting two different cases that I did not have to fight. You know, I went to jail for one because I was just making a stance, but it wasn't a situation where, okay, whether you're going to go to jail or not, you know, it was a more of, uh, of looking at the big picture and where we're at right now today for people to be able to do what they want to do and say what they want to say on the records. Yeah, it's all uh, about it, it, is, it is sad that you don't get credit, and a lot of people, it's that message is kind of buried because again i'm not a part of the in crowd of those folks who like coming down to miami and uh celebrating that's why i always try to run them out of here yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, come it, check in it's all about yeah well we, we're going to figure that part out but with that said it's all about general principle being fighters underdogs down here from the crib being historical such as yourself iconic living legend luke i just want to tell you thank you so much for your time appreciate you enjoy the a and to many, many more, my friend. Thank you always. Thanks, Luke. And thank you for yeah, giving man, back love always. You. Love you, my brother. Dolly, love you too, Pablo. Woo! And that's how you take it from a negative to a positive. Dolly. <laughs> 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 <laughs>